Hey guys, uh, this is the last stream and I'm gonna do a notification on Instagram really quick. Done. Okay. Uh, since so many people are usually complaining that I'm not announcing these live streams beforehand, but honestly I was just um, at the gym and I had a really long run before this, so I wasn't sure if I was in a good condition to start tending afterwards, so I was thinking of maybe doing a countdown, but then I thought that maybe that's too much stress for me right now, and something that I don't need right now. It's been quite a relaxing Christmas, but Everything surrounding that has been quite uh, stressful, especially work stuff has been a lot of ups and downs, but also really exciting stuff. I'm sure that a lot of you have saw that um, free bus pack that I was able to be part of, and I got the notification about that. Um, that was really cool. It's one of the most fun things. I know I have like spoken about that a few times in this live stream, so it was awesome that it was happening like in real life. That kind of like surreal. But in the end everything came together quite quickly, so I had to hustle. this painting I want to use lots of greens and since somebody is going to ask it anyway I'm using the blueberry brush for this painting. Thank you for everybody who has like already shown up without any notice. It's really nice of you. I hope you all have a really wonderful Christmas and something that is relaxing for once. I know that this year has been probably really difficult for many of you. For me art has been always just one of those things where I can kind of escape it's like a hidden vacation, it doesn't cost anything more than time. So that's one of the reasons why so many of my paintings look kind of like chill and relaxing, because I'm really just speaking to myself. Also, apologies for the weird bangs that you will hear at some point. Um, we was just out for a walk and now she has returned and after walks she does this dognado mode where she's just running around for, for no reason and usually she runs so quickly that she actually hits the door before turning because we have uh, wooden floors so they don't have enough friction for her to make quick turns so sometimes she just stops by actually hitting the wall and then continues running. Has this saying, I was sitting and feeling some sort of art block trying to make a sketch after a few days, a break and your notification popped out. <laughs> nice. Well, this is your call to action to paint something. It doesn't have to be anything good. I've been thinking about art block a lot since. It's something that a lot of uh, my subscribers have been talking about in the comments, especially during this year. And it's probably not my place to talk about art block since I don't really have art blocks. Uh, now 
I'm not gonna say that I don't have any periods of time in my life where I'm not painting as much. Of course, like everybody else, I have those. One year, I only painted a few pictures, but I think art block is this sort of like a huge uh, umbrella term that people slap on this uh, situation that they have in their life. But if you look into it, it, there's usually something more specific than that. And just calling it an art blog is kind of an easy way not to talk about the real, real issues in there. Because a lot of the time, what usually people would call an art blog, for me, it's just like fatigue. Sometimes I'm just tired and I need a break. Like all works, you can't just hustle. 24 7 sometimes you need a break and you need to kind of like let your mind breathe and have new experiences otherwise you will have nothing to paint about and in any other profession that would just be called like fatigue and you need a break or and this is usually something that uh, concerns most art students when they say that they have i'm not going to kind of like put words into your, your mouth, like whatever you're going through, that, that's your own issue. And I'm just talking about my experiences with what the students have been um, uh, telling me about. And usually when we kind of like dig deeper into their own art blogs is that they have um, fear of posting their art in public or fear of making art at all, because they are afraid of the outcome. They are afraid that the art might be bad, and that their art being bad says something about themselves that feels kind of too much to take in at that moment. But for those situations, I don't have any easy advice, but simple advice. Just get the bad art out of the way. If you kind of like commit to a streak of making art, even if it's bad art, you will never have like an undefeated like string of bad artworks. At some point, a good painting will kind of like sneak into a bunch of bad paintings if you just do a bunch of them. At some point, you will break your streak of bad paintings. And if you are committed to not letting that kind of uh, journey knock you down, you will get to the good paintings eventually. But the bad paintings will always keep coming. You'll just have to live with that. You will never get that good at art that you will be not afraid of like failing a painting. You will always be afraid of failing. Valerie, thank you. Merry Christmas to you too. Um, why is it called a blueberry brush? Because I wanted to have names in this brush pack that are somehow associated with bears. Just because I like bears, there's nothing more deeper to that. Except um, Forest Trail Brush, it has like more personal naming for me because it's from one of the forest trails where I like to run and the grain of that brush is the actual trail that I took a photograph of. Your videos are so relaxing, but when I try to pick up my pen, I get so anxious. Uh, I get anxious too. Uh, sometimes when people say this, I kind of feel like they're asking for me to say something that will make it all okay. And I can't, and I can't because that wouldn't be what I experience myself. I have a lot of anxiety around painting, a lot. I have just gotten used to it, that it won't go away. 
but I have my like choices. I can either make paintings, even if they are bad paintings, or not make any paintings at all. And out of those two options, I'd rather make 100 bad paintings than not paint at all. colors happening in this painting so hope I can solve this faster than in my last live stream because to be honest in my last live stream I was just like sweating bullets because of the colors so horrifying <laughs> now it's one of my most favorite most favorite pieces on my Instagram ever but honestly, when I was painting that, I was just like, okay, maybe I should just like open this window and jump out. It's all over for me. <laughs> There's no way I can paint myself out of this corner. Also, it didn't help that I was making it in a live stream. It was just oof. Mariam is asking, I have a question. I always struggle when it comes to imagination and creativity. Is there any way to get better imagination? Yes. Practice. Like everything else, imagination is about practice. And I really don't think that this is like underlined enough by especially people on this specific platform on YouTube and I'm not gonna like call out any specific artists here because I think it kind of like encompasses all of them and this comes from this like new trend of art teaching that is something that ne never has been done before and it's all about these step-by-step uh, -step tutorials that's not a way to develop your imagination if you just like repeat a painting that somebody else has done. You can take the techniques and the techniques and the visual problem solving, that's the stuff that you need to study. And for those I recommend that you listen to people who are good at teaching that and people that you actually respect and want the results of. But don't repeat the actual painting, because that will not teach you visual problem solving or storytelling or expressing what is in your head, because it's a skill. And if you just repeat something that already exists, like for example, a lot of people go to Pinterest and then they look at pictures for inspiration. 
that's not how you develop any imaginations. Just start painting and then think about what you want to say when the painting is at that point. I think it's there are many exercises that you can do to develop your imagination. One of those is just to have like some basic shapes, like a square or a circle, and then try to make it into one thing. Then you are limited by, for example, a square or X shape, and you have to do a painting around that one thing. And then it's your up to your imagination to figure it out. And you need to kind of like go into that mode where you're like, okay, this is a tough problem and I don't have any answers. And you still have to kind of work through that difficulty. That difficulty is what forces your imagination to grow. Oh, <laughs> sorry, this got like immediately super preachy, but I feel like very pra passionate about this because I do see where this sort of like, uh, mentality comes from that people just want easy answers and easy answers are like very uh, they kind of sell themselves it's much easier to sell an art course where you can show that like at the end of this course you will have painted this painting so what you haven't learned anything valuable on how to develop your own voice so with every art practice, make sure that you are also practicing your imagination. Even if you're painting like life drawing, it's still about how you see the model and how you use the line and how you do shading, how do you do composition. Even if two art students paint the exact same or draw the exact same uh, life model in, in the same angle, they will still have different mood, even if they only use charcoal and line. It's about how they see it, not doing the same, same image, even if there's study involved in it. And I think this way of studying art is also way more fun than just like repeating something that already exists because when you're done you really haven't added anything to the culture as a whole so I think it's way more motivating Some art teachers think that you should like regard your studies as just this sort of like trash that you throw away. But I don't think people try their hardest when they have already this uh, assumption that they will throw away the thing. If I could, I would force like all art students to post all of their practice work online. And it's not because they would like their social media following that way. I honestly think that in most cases people just wouldn't care at all at that point yet, but it would just make everybody try a bit harder. And are a bit more accountable for what you make. Chiara or Kayara? The uh, surname is like unpronounceable for me, sorry. Uh, which brush is the favorite from your pack? Um, bought it about a week ago and wanna paint along. It kind of <laughs> depends on what I want to paint. Uh, just a few weeks ago I had this kind of like few paintings that I felt like the bare brush was the perfect brush for those because bare brush kind of it's has a very unique way of blending colors and it's very fun for those sort of like messier paintings so for a while I really liked that but then I switched <laughs> uh, it, it changes depending on what mood I am in Really. Sorry, I can't give a more specific answer. 
I tried to narrow it down to as few brushes as, as I could. Because I had about 30 brushes when I started working on that brush back a few years ago. And my goal was to just to get it to as few brushes as possible. And whenever I noticed that two brushes are uh, close to each other, I would try to combine their qualities into one brush to kind of get rid of that choosing clutter, because I, I don't want to add to that. Julia is asking, is there a reason why you don't have a Twitch? I have just barely uh, learned how to do YouTube streaming. Uh, I think it's not within my current capabilities to do Twitch streaming as well. Also, just recently I heard this um, interview from some Twitch streamer and they said that whenever you're not streaming on Twitch, you lose subscribers on Twitch. <sighs> YouTube is already incredibly stressful, like mentally, to be on this platform. I just want to kind of be careful of what I commit my mind to. Like I said, I have lots of anxiety as well, especially about this channel and doing content for this channel, so... I want to be careful of like not breaking myself, because then there won't be even YouTube streams or YouTube channel or videos. There will be nothing if I can't keep myself in working order. I know this sounds like really dramatic, but it's, um, it's a full-time job. Kind of monitor myself if I'm able to keep doing this. But my priority is to keep doing this, but also to keep doing this in a way that it feels preferable than just applying and getting a normal job <laughs> without any of this press. It's completely impossible to describe like, the pressure that goes into content creation, but you have probably seen that many YouTubers have recently posted videos where they talk about this uh, top 10 feature of YouTube Studio that is only for content creators, that when you post a new video, you immediately get this like top 10 ranking of like how well did this video do next to your other videos that you posted in a row and it's just like complete garbage. <laughs> uh, I think it also skews the kind of videos that people want to make and it takes away from the selection that people could see on the platform because YouTube is like really pushing for constant growth on the platform otherwise they will notify you in actual like big bold letters and pop in windows that like you are doing badly your recent video is bombing and it's always a terrible feeling when you see that and if i could i would just disable it completely because like there's nothing that there's no information in those pop-ins that like help me be a better content creator it's just unnecessary stress as far as i'm concerned
sorry, I need to keep drinking. I just ran 13 kilometers, which for me is like a lot right now. But on the plus side, every time after a run, I feel super relaxed because all of my energy has already gone into running. So in a way, it's the perfect moment to do a live stream because if I'm already like physically dying, what's one bad painting <laughs> in all of this? It's fine. I love doing best, just these random lines. Honestly, if this was a traditional oil painting, I'm not gonna even lie. I would probably be pretty confident in calling this piece done soon. But since it's a digital painting, there are different expectations with that medium. I can't do that, but... I wouldn't feel terrible if this wasn't finished oil painting. full screen for once. I never do this. So. I just will try. Uh, I notice you use mask on a layer sometimes, then you adjust it. I'm a beginner and I don't understand what you were doing with it. Why the mask? I don't think I have a mask right now. But I can show a mask technique later in this stream. I definitely have an idea how I can do that. I think sometimes when people ask for techniques or that they say that they don't know all of the technical aspects of, for example, Procreate or Photoshop to start painting. Uh, I think knowing how to change the size of the brush, how to change the opacity of the brush, and how to use layers, how to add and merge and delete layers. When you know those things, you have the basics for all painting. Now, I'm not gonna say that learning how to use clipping mask and layer masks is a useless skill. It's not. But all of those things will just make those basics and painting a bit faster. There's nothing like secret about those additional things like blending modes that will make the application itself paint for you. They are just kind of shortcuts for the painting itself. And they are useful, but they are not necessary. So, if you're just starting out and you can only use a brush and maybe eraser, that's fine. You can still do full paintings with that. Maybe I should do like some kind of like a painting challenge where I just use no layers and no additional tools with just colors and brush. It's not that limiting, but for these live streams, I usually use all of the time-saving shortcuts that I can. Sometimes those are very cheap tricks, but um, time is important here. I don't want to waste anyone's time, but a lot of my live streams are already like insanely long. I'm sorry for that. I just can't paint any faster. Also, if you're just starting out painting, I recommend not focusing on speed at all for years. It's, um, it's 
Speed painting is not a skill that anybody should like practice. When you get better at painting, you will start painting faster. That's pretty much end of story. I know that uh, digital art industry emphasizes speed a lot when you do, for example, commissions, but that's only relevant when you have those commissions, when you're working with a movie studio or something, and they want everything done yesterday. But at that point, you will probably have already spent years painting, and you are faster at painting, so... Painting speed is not like a separate skill that you should waste time on, because usually that comes at the cost of like solving those actual problems and painting only the fun parts, so... Ruben du Duxa? Dush, dusha? <laughs> I really like your Hogwarts painting, but those colors are amazing. I want to learn to use them. I don't have a Hogwarts painting. I never have done a single Harry Potter inspired piece in my life. But thanks. I probably just missed the reference. Not 30 kilometers, 13. <laughs> Sorry to disappoint. <laughs> but the runs are gonna get longer. I'm not a fast runner, I just like it. screenshot this uh, really useful palette when I started using palettes a few years ago I didn't anticipate that I would use the same palette so many times and I would be able to get so many different paintings out of the same palettes before that I always thought that I need to create a new palette for every single painting Especially for this, it's a really good way to just start when you already have a good set of colors that you like. Also, nobody owns colors, so like, feel free to rip colors from anywhere. But I don't recommend using finished paintings as a way to create a palette, because they have already been edited, so you probably won't have any editing room in the palette that way. But photos that you take yourself, for example, on the phone, they are great. I especially like uh, bad photos because then you don't feel like you have to reach that same level of quality with the painting. But when you have a crappy photograph that just happens to have great colors in it, that's the perfect opportunity to create a palette out of it because then your painting will probably look better and then you feel like you have done something worth doing. And 
now gonna make a new layer and I'm gonna use a mask on it. But first I'm going to use this layer and change it into screen blend mode. Then go into curves and I want to punch out the warm colors. So I'm gonna go into blue curve and then just lower that part. And this will make everything more yellow and then add a bit more red to the highlights like this. So now it's not just a lighter version because then that would just make all the colors look really fat. flat. Now I'm gonna change the layer mask to black and that will hide everything on this layer. But, and when I paint on this layer mask I'm gonna use the white paint. So that will just kind of carve out that layer that I just hit with black color back into view. So everything that is in black will be hidden. But because it's a screen layer and this is really important and I'm painting on top of this layer that is not full opacity. I mean it's full opacity but it has transparency in the brush strokes. So it's really important if this layer is in screen blend mode that I set it as a clipping mask. So when I merge it down with the layer below it won't leave those like ugly dark fringes at the edges. What did I just do? I hit all of these. Okay. Oops. Yeah, I'm gonna get rid of like some of those additional layers so I'm not gonna get confused <laughs> because that's something that happens very easily when I'm trying to talk and paint and read and follow the conversation at the same time in English. My brain just like can't handle all of the information at once. I'm gonna just use a very big brush because this is just about finding the balance for the painting. And now I'm gonna merge it with the layer below. Actually I'm just gonna... No. And keep that so that I can color pick that. Um, hero as an accent color. And then continue. Sorry for always like uh, activating the brush menu. It's a bad habit, but whenever I do it, I'm not changing the brush. It's just to get rid of some other menu that I have going on. There are probably other ways to do that, but that's the safe way of me not making accidentally brush strokes on the canvas. In this style it doesn't really matter, but for example for my graphic style it really sometimes ends up with like accidental brush strokes on screen, especially if I'm using the Procreate Pocket phone version. When I'm not careful then I can actually accidentally make brush strokes on screen that I didn't intend to make at all. That's why it's just like a built-in habit for me at this point now. Thank you. 
I'm trying to match these two, but apparently I got the snapping wrong. Maybe it's not even that important. I was kind of confused how to do arrays at first, but then I realized that I only need to have two and then I can judge the distance based on one set. And this way you can get kind of like evenly spaced lines. Same curves trick, making it a little bit warmer. And then taking out some of the saturation because like using curves like that always cranks up the saturation. Sometimes you want it. In this case I don't. Raven Shadow Legend Bang 90, 90 years ago it says what a name <laughs> that was the whole story uh, does imagining the shapes you draw in 3D work um, sometimes but not for all styles like for example for my graphic style it's more about the like the graphic readability and the visual impact so 3D in that style doesn't really always matter sometimes, but not always. Sometimes it can be even a distraction and you're not going for realism. Realism is something that I'm not going for that often anyway, but sometimes for understanding the shape, thinking about the form in 3D is useful. But not in all cases.
I would like to see him do art in Minecraft. <laughs> I haven't played Minecraft yet. I'd really like to. I just don't like the colors, if I'm completely honest. No offense to any of the developers. I'm sure they have done great work and it's, it's a great product that fits most people. Um, I'm just very picky with the colors. There are these sort of texture packs. Maybe I could download one of those. But it really is the only reason why I haven't played Minecraft yet. The colors. Maybe once I start playing, you get used to it really quickly. I don't know. But then it doesn't seem to be a problem that anybody else is having. No, oh, it's not Minecraft, it's just me. I've been playing this game called Forager the last week a lot. It's really good. And it's made by mostly one developer. Super impressive. I'm like extremely addictive. Ruben is saying, okay then, what you posted yesterday using the honey brush wasn't Hogwarts, uh, but that was cool. Oh, that painting. It is the flying church thing. Okay, I can see it. Hogwarts is like gothic architecture as well. But it's a castle that has like multiple towers and stuff. At least in the movies. Finnish covers of uh, Harry Potter books weren't that great. I like the UK covers more. Also, Swedish Harry Potter covers are amazing. Like those are by far my favorite. If you have time, I recommend. Actually, I don't, because it, just seeing the pictures doesn't do them justice. Because they had this sort of like embossed. Uh, 3D pattern that was very ornamental on top of it, and also like gold lame uh, accents on the cover as well. So they were super beautiful. But the English ones also had two different styles. One was kind of like for children, and then there were these ones that I liked more, which were like more minimalistic
worried that I'm not going fast enough. <laughs> but it's fine, I know what I'm doing. Kind of? I don't know. Do I? It's an arrogant thing to say about a painting. I think I know where this painting is going. That's probably all I can say at this point. I'm sure watching this for this time probably is very confusing as far. It will make sense, or it won't, I don't know. Depends on probably what you want from art. I like to be surprised, I think that's the one thing that I ask painting, at least from my own paintings. So where do you get the inspiration for the things you draw? They look amazing. 90s video games mostly. Loneliness. Same things that I always say. Relationships. has this kind of like soothing effect on me and I kind of want to relieve that in my paintings. Hey, how did you do that, like you turned the Procreate into black and white with doing something with the power button? In my last video, a lot of people asked this in the comments and I linked them to my tutorial that lasts about two minutes in how you can set your own iPad or iPhone to do that same thing. My iPhone also has the power button trick and I don't just use it in Procreate Pocket, but I often use it before going to sleep, so if I'm browsing the phone in the evening, I browse it in black and white so that it's kind of less addicting. <laughs> it's easier to put the phone away when it doesn't have colors. It's uh, pretty dumb, but for me it kind of works. And because of my work, I basically have to be on social media most of the week. And I am aware of like the addict, these platforms are just made to be super addictive. So 
that's like one small way for me to protect myself from that. Because sometimes it does get out of hand that I'm just replying to hundreds of comments and questions and DMs. is slowly disappearing from view. It's kind of fitting. By the way, how is the audio right now? Uh, I just figured out this one new trick for the audio that I can check the sound levels by myself by doing a small recording uh, in the streaming software without starting a stream. But this is the first time that I have ever been able to test the sound at all. Up to this point it has always been just a guess, so sorry about that, but streaming is so complicated, my god. I mean, if somebody asked me to teach them how to do streaming with all the technical stuff surrounding it, I would be just like... The classes will be from Monday to Friday from... 9 to 5 every day for two months. Be there and I will give you all the information that you need. Previously I made the mistake of like just trusting the bars that show the audio levels, but there are so many modifiers that affect them in the hardware and in the software as well. <laughs> it would be just impossible to explain in one YouTube video or a series, like they would have to be in order.
I was thinking of maybe doing like a Christmas themed playlist, but then I am paying for like several different music platforms for the license the licenses that I'm using on this channel. But uh, as much as I like the music on those platforms, I'm paying for them for a reason, because I actually enjoy the music, but the Christmas music was just like, I can't do this, especially thinking that am I going to be able to paint for hours listening to this on the headphones, like no way. So <clears throat> I ended up with more jazz, because sometimes jazz ends up in the playlist by accident. And I like jazz, but it just breaks the flow of my normal music sometimes. This is like now more jazz heavy that, that I gathered. for the creaking chair. Next year I'm gonna switch the chair, I promise. Maybe I could get one of those ridiculous gaming chairs. I mean, if there's one feature that would actually be beneficial, maybe they don't creak. <laughs> At all. I don't know. Let's remember that the budget of this channel is like peanuts. Now it's really bothering me. When I started talking about it, now it's all I'm hearing in my head. <laughs> oh.
there are some brush strokes here that I already like quite a lot. So when I'm kind of cleaning up this painting, I hope I don't lose that sense of spontane spontaneity. It can be sometimes kind of scary with this painting style when you don't really know how other people will react to it. And there can be this sort of like urge that like I want to make it look uh, I don't know, more conservative so that people will have easier time looking at it. But the basic concept of this piece is so simple that I think it will leave quite a lot of room for that sort of experimentation and loose brush strokes. So I'm gonna keep the brush strokes loose, but I just want to make them organized. The main point kind of beats. That's all I need. This is the reason why it's lucky to have everything on the same layer, otherwise I wouldn't be able to do those sort of like um, accidental bleeds of the color. And the brush stroke is overlapping two different colors and then I loosen my grip of the brush and then it goes into this sort of like um, smearing brush mode. That lets the paint kind of like switch between hues. I really like that effect. You know that some don't. And as a quality, it's kind of tricky to work with. Because you have to kind of be okay with the happy little accidents that happen there.
Munar is saying, not even a week left in 2020. Hopefully 2021 is better. It's hard to disagree with that. Yet at the same time, I have to say that uh, I've been pretty lucky, all things considered. Sure, I don't have a job anymore, but this year there has been so many great things. We met so many like awesome people through this YouTube channel and my Instagram. I'm really happy about those new people that I have met and also this year I met my dog it has given me so much joy just by <laughs> existing so it would be, feel weird to call 2020 a bad year for me it has also included so many great things but I know it's not the same for everybody Stefan is saying hello. One time that I actually know what the painting is about, nobody else does. And I'm fine with that. <laughs> I'm not gonna for one second actually say that I'm not stressed about the outcome of this. Yeah. Doesn't happen every day.
what did you inspire to draw this? Uh, Oiben Pla is in the chat. Um, 2020, really. And personally, what 2020 has been for me. That's what this painting is about, really. Saying happy holidays, Mikko. Happy holidays, Lita. How is everyone's Christmas going so far? Uh, I'm sure a lot of you have cancelled trip for your family. I was planning to see my sister, but then everything happened and everything got cancelled basically. was in a hotel room with uh, Vivi and my boyfriend nearby. It was a staycation. Batman is saying, hey Mikko, love watching you paint. Do you teach at all? I'd love to be your student. Um, I do teach. I will probably be teaching more in, in the ne near future. But because those classes have always been through a school, they haven't been like publicly open to anybody. I've been working on my own online course that isn't hosted by the school itself, but it's something that kind of 
as the same stuff, but in a format that would fit um, online course better, so that people can kind of learn at their own pace. But on top of that, I've been thinking of maybe doing something like uh, quicker and maybe a, like a smaller set, like one of these ideas that I have in my head. Um, actually, if anybody's watching this later, when the stream is over, feel free to comment me. But I've been thinking of this like one um, course that would be like very specific to building like one specific type of a painting. And it would be like a build your own airship course that in the course a student would design their own airship and then we would actually go through the process of like painting all the different parts. But it wouldn't be like step by step of how I do a painting and then somebody else repeats it. But I would kind of like give this tool set of different fun things to build an airship on and that would be quite advanced. But I think because of what I have in mind for it, I will probably be able to teach like quite advanced concept in practice by going through those steps. Yeah, I I have a pretty clear vision for that. But probably not something that people would expect when I have been talking about my own online course for so long. But it would probably be like um, easier to just like publish that since all the rest is still going to take so much editing and writing and there are so many assets that I still need for it to be ready. But the project, it would be fun to do like a smaller project like that for it be done. And I just think it would be fun to do. I mean, my main thinking is that like this is a fun way that I would learn some of these concepts especially for a top-down image that is a really difficult thing to paint to have something concrete at the end of it. But for design skills, like I'm... Uh, like I said earlier, I'm not interested in making tutorials where people kind of repeat my exact same painting. I think it would be kind of irresponsible of me. And I'm sure that that would be a very easy way to kind of self-promote my own art, but it's just against my principles. I don't want to take away that opportunity to kind of develop imagination. is saying my Christmas was cancelled but it was okay. I was safe and warm in my house and I'm grateful for that. Yeah, I, I guess that's the best that we can hope for <laughs> in this situation. Jason is saying I did FaceTime with my parents and my brothers and their families so it wasn't cancelled. It was just different this year. We had a great time. That sounds nice. We also did a Zoom call at some point. It wasn't really the same, but it was more than nothing. It was nice that people also cried.
interesting how much longer are you streaming for well it seems like i have a lot of work <laughs> ahead of me i really should be worried about the time frame more but nah i've done so much worrying over the past few days that i just can't <laughs> especially after the run i have no catastrophic thoughts left in my brain or energy for them ending energy I think that is kind of hard to communicate that whenever like for example a school asks me to do a lecture or I'm doing a course they have like specific things that they want me to teach and the time is always quite limited so I have to kind of stick to their plans so we never have time for those sort of like fun ideas like let's build an airship or stuff but then if I do for example a product like that if it doesn't sell then I can, can take the responsibility for that but if I would have to for example make this argument with a school uh, why it's useful and how it can like do all these things in practice I'm not sure that I would be able to like uh, take that responsibility when for example in the school the main emphasis is always uh, concept art and there's this very video game specific agenda that needs to be accomplished so that's like very specific boxes that I need to hit with the lectures because it always has to like serve the video game um, visual readability and visual impact and marketing and such and that's a very like very limited portion of art and once I stopped uh, doing video games myself for a living and I started doing my own art stuff uh, basically it's just as a hobby I noticed that there's like so many more things that you can do with art like with all the commissions that I've been doing, they are all for very different products and they have very different like visual needs. And the movie concept stuff is completely different from video games. It's just fun. I think the fundamentals of visual composition, I think those are kind of universal to all the different styles and all the different mediums.
by the way, I'm not criticizing the schools. I know that um, the schools have very long traditions on how art is taught, and when you do enough courses, you can see that certain ways of teaching just make sense for specific topics, and they have like the most benefits. But more and more, I've noticed over time that you have to kind of like talk about also the life of living a life where you do creative work because it's so <laughs> difficult it can be very difficult and people have such weird views of what artists life is and if the school itself doesn't prepare them at all for that i don't think that's very responsible because art can be very fulfilling and fun but it's not that by itself, you really do have to work on it on your own. And I, I think a teacher can be a very helpful <laughs> in that case where you can kind of outline some of the incoming probable problems and at least have some tools on how to overcome them. Or at least this knowledge that like these problems aren't specific to you and There's nothing wrong with you if you just wake up one day and don't feel like painting anything ever <laughs> again. That's completely normal, and yet you still have to keep painting. And when you're working, you really don't have time for such luxuries as an artist's block. You still have to kind of get over those situations in a really quick time frame. can be kind of crushing when you know that you don't have time to have three months art block or a break you need to keep painting and new painting has to be done by Monday and those are the realities of doing creative work and if we just talk about color theory. Uh, it's important, but uh, I think it's also important that the students develop a life for themselves that they can actually enjoy. Because just reaching your goals, if they don't make you happy, like they're not, they're worthless, those goals. Also money misconceptions. I can't tell you how many students have uh, described their goals that like they are going to gain this social media following and then they are gonna sell prints and that's their job. <laughs> In those cases I'm always like whoa <laughs> stop <laughs> do you have a backup plan? <laughs> These moments are called scumbling, and that's what I learned from Sid Mead. And the point of these brush strokes is to kind of like just hide the eye back into the painting. I'm kind of mimicking the surrounding brush strokes, but at the same time it's kind of like a low contrast version of them. To communicate that the painting is over, and you need 
to return to the starting point. Music really makes me feel like somebody should be mixing me a fancy drink right now. <laughs> and I only have water. Runner Mikko, no. I, that would definitely give me too much fitness uh, pressure. <laughs> I have Good days with running and then bad months. I try. But running is really important for my mental health. I've noticed that whenever there's a stressful situation, that there's tons of work, I usually try to hustle more time into my schedule by skipping running and then it kind of like everything just unravels terribly because running is my way of kind of like decompress all the stress <laughs> and when I don't have that outlet it kind of like snowballs into like anxiety oh. I'm not saying that everybody should be a runner but like have some some kind of like outlet for your stress Actually helps. Really important. Maybe in 2025, when we have the budget for it, we'll have a live stream where I have an actual bartender. That would be nice. <laughs> the, in Finnish language, uh, bartender is actually called Baari Mikko, which is like bar and then my name, Mikko. Running used to be my therapy, like that. Uh, Kailani says, I'm disabled now, so I can't do it anymore. Really sorry to hear that. I'm trying to find new outlets. It's difficult. I think about that a lot. That um, Trying to be like actively grateful for being able to run. That sounds like something that would be really challenging. Because like all runners, I have tons of like knee injuries and foot injuries all the time. Especially when I am trying to do like a long distance program and those kind of like stop your running. 
away, so I try to be like actively grateful for when my legs are actually working, because I know that I can take it for granted and everybody doesn't have the same possibilities to run. So I really try not to waste too much time cursing how difficult and hard running is and try to be aware of the fact that I'm lucky that I'm able to do it. Having said that, I have to admit that I'm very bad and lazy with the whole foam rolling thing. I know that it's important, but I could be better with that stuff. It's pretty much the same with like any physical injury, like for example for bench presses, I kind of like break my shoulder all the time and then you go to physiotherapist and they give you these exercises that you need to be doing these exercises that take like half an hour of doing like one monotonous non-resistance movement again and again. You need to be doing these movements now daily to get this fixed and then you ask okay so for, for how long do I need to keep doing this and it's just like you're old for the rest of your life of course like this is now what you do <laughs> you wake up every day and then you do these movements so that your body doesn't break it's like oh my god That's probably their hardest part of their job, to try to get their patients to actually do the work and not just expect for a drug and miracle cure. Ruben is saying, I am just drawing and these layers are very confusing. Um, don't use the layers then.
I'm gonna do like a fake shadow with just a really cheap um, curves darken. And then I'm gonna set this as a clipping mask and then move it to the opposite direction of the light. And then set it as a darkened layer. It's not perfect, but graphic. I'm gonna save one set of bars for later, just in case I need it. Actually, I need it already. I'll recycle this sideways. Too late to change names now. Branding already happened. Besides, I'm already committed to this. Sometimes when people ask me why I call myself Angry Mick, I always give them a different excuse. Like for example, right now, the reason why my name is Angry Mikko is because some people go to the grocery store and then they do their shopping and then they take the shopping cart and then they walk out of the entire mall area with the shopping cart and then they just leave it in front of their house or in a park 
That makes me angry, Mikko. That's the reason. Oh my god. Drives me up the wall. Seeing those. Maybe he's just angry at his chair. She only say true. No, it's a cheap chair. The chair is doing all it can, all it can do. The Greeks are just the chair crying. Oh God, get off me! You're too heavy. This is literally torture. I, I, I don't speak chair, but these are just um, guesses what the chair might be saying. And I have spent the last few days mostly eating. So. One small run is not going to upset. Emergency one. Sorry. 
I guess the one thing that I would really hope that the new iPads would have bigger battery. Sometimes it's just a battle to try to survive to the end of whatever project that you're doing. You can immediately recognize an, any Apple device user because when they enter a room, they immediately scan the corners of the room looking for the next power outlet. That's definitely me. You kind of develop this new instinct of like immediately recognizing how the structure of the building works and then you kind of like just know that there's going to be a power outlet in that corner. really doesn't seem to be like one of Apple's priorities with the new updates because they barely even talk about it. Open is asking what the brush is now. It's still blueberry, right? I remember correctly. Yes. I don't switch brushes when paintings.
So it's two hours. Oh. Could be faster, but I'm okay on time for now. It's just the battery that worries me. First, I need to make sure that it fits with the background, so I'm gonna get rid of some of those high contrast strokes. That is like all of the questions so far in one. TV is blowing up currently. It's just impossible when sometimes she hears the noise of a fire truck.
whatever Constance is riding right now is exactly true. Sorry about the dog. We are doing this online course right now on new training techniques and some of them are working but it's a 10 week course and she's going through difficult phase so some parking is going to happen there's no way that i can avoid that So I got the USB-C cord, but apparently I also got a dog. <laughs> it's one of those uh, Greek myth blessings that like you get what you wished for, but it comes with a cost, and the cost is that now you have a shark in your room. Maybe I'm a shrek By the way, if my boyfriend wasn't watching the dog, like this whole live stream wasn't, wouldn't even be possible. Um, if it wasn't for the holidays, I wouldn't be able to paint right now at all. you used to run. Um, I live next to traves that are in the forest. Those are also a great source of all of my like, painting ideas. That's like in nature. There's something about running that always kind of all the painting ideas come right then and there. Sometimes it can be inconvenient, but I've noticed that I need to make a note, no matter like how silly it is. Sometimes I just uh, open up. Uh, 
um, voice recording app and then I just shout into the app what idea I'm having. Like for example that glass house that happened during a run and I was like oh my god I can have all these ideas come right now I'm ha having a run. <laughs> Can't you see I'm not in a situation where I can start painting right now but I didn't want to let that idea go so I just shouted into the voice app what I need to paint later. Because you always forget if you don't make notes. And there are two schools of, of thought on this. Um, Stephen King said in one of his lectures that uh, the good ideas are the ones that don't go away. That even if you don't write them down, the good ideas are ones that like keep coming back and they just like nag at you and nag at you and then it suddenly turns into one of his books. But for painting, I kind of like have this mentality that I try not to say no. I try to say yes to as many ideas that I can possibly say yes to and try to get as many ideas done in a painting form that I can. Because for me, I've noticed that that kind of like gets the creativity going. It's kind of like a valve and you have to kind of work at it to keep it open. But if you get kind of like picky with it and think that like, no, this idea wouldn't be um, good for my subscribers or my followers on Instagram that I can do this, it wouldn't be great for my brand or some such bullshit, then your creativity will be just like, okay, I can see that my services aren't needed here and they will just take their business elsewhere. I think that happens. But then when you just say yes to everything, no matter how crazy it is, then the ideas seem to just keep coming. Also the practice, or the practice of painting, it's important to keep painting, because if you take too many breaks, it's always harder to come back from a break than to keep a good chain of paintings going. And by good chain of paintings, I mean like just painting. They don't have to be good. The practice of just showing up for work is what matters and publishing. I kind of think that, at least for me, that like unpublished work doesn't matter. Because you... Well, there's just many reasons why I think that. Especially if you're practicing, I think it's like, important to set a bar of publishing. Otherwise you will never develop that kind of mental strength of dealing with them pressure of having your art be public it doesn't come easy and you probably will never get over how difficult it can be but it definitely doesn't help if you don't practice publishing I I try to publish all the paintings that I do I think that's the greatest difference where I noticed that I was able to be way more productive than before that I just stop giving up on paintings and then just make everything no matter how hopeless it seemed. And then through that I noticed that I'm... And probably most people are really bad at reviewing their own work. That when you are painting you probably already have these assumptions that like how people are going to react to it. They're probably never accurate. Like definitely... The public response is something that is just out of your hands and you don't know how people will react to the paintings. Constance is saying, yes, I'm a designer at an ad agency. I mostly make posters and postcards for casinos in Oklahoma. Hmm. 
That sounds like fun work. Probably stress-free, probably at least to a degree that making posters can be. is getting so hot that there are these accidental brush strokes happening. Really annoying. How do you feel about doing art on the side versus having it as a full-time job? Hmm. Well, when I was having, when I had this uh, job of like doing like very, very boring graphic design work, um, by very boring I mean that it was very stress-free and it allowed me to do a lot of my own art. I mean, because it just freed up so much mental energy for painting. I wouldn't say that I was painting less, but now that um, I'm doing art kind of as a job for myself and as a freelance, there is a, an extra level of stress to it. Because it's not like I can just not think about the money and how am I going to survive January? <laughs> I mean, those are real things. Uh, how is the accounting going to happen? That's a real actual cost. So just to do the monthly accounting, it's about 200 plus euros every month and you have to make money to kind of justify the kind of spending and having this YouTube channel it's definitely an ongoing cost like all the editing and sound editing software that stuff it just seems like there are a lot more of these sort of like logistics things that you need to keep track of. And it's a lot, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, it's probably one of the reasons why I've been so stressed. But 
I'm hoping that at some point I will have some kind of rhythm to it. A lot of YouTubers do these sort of like content calendars for themselves so that it helps them kind of manage their time and work. But that scares me a lot because I know that if I, for example, now write for January third week that on this week I'm going to do a tutorial on layers. When that week comes, I'm not going to be excited to do it. I'm not going to make a great video because I'm not excited to do it. Also, I will try to kind of like shoehorn a painting into that video so that those two can exist at once and it would just be a mess. And the painting idea would probably be really hard to come up with because I have already in that situation, I would have set so many boundaries for my creativity that it kind of would take away all the fun from painting. So I'm trying to manage my channel in seeing like what kind of direction it needs to go, what kind of videos are fun to do, what kind of videos would be actually helpful, because that's kind of the biggest reason why I choose whatever topic that I have. And somebody was already commenting on this and it's absolutely true that every video that I make, I'm not trying to help other people. I'm always trying to come up with a way to help myself and kind of process that out loud in a video. And my hope is that somebody will kind of like process those difficult emotions the same way with the video or if there's a difficult visual problem I'm gonna kind of like talk about it in the video and when people paint they might notice the same kind of visual problems in their own paintings and once they have seen somebody else kind of like solved it one way it will at least give them some tools on how to approach their own visual problem solving because it's always going to be different and I'm not going to say that there's only one way to solve a visual problem whenever you have a painting that you need to solve somehow there's always an endless amount of doors it might seem like you're restricted but you can always change everything so just seeing somebody else go through like a problem solving scenario I think helps can kind of like open your mind the way that you approach visual problems into new ways of thinking. Now the screen is really dying. I don't know why. enough battery that can be it. So I have noticed that some people wish that a lot of my videos would be more technical, but how many of those can you actually make? Uh, I think people really, really grossly miscalculate about how much of like learning art theory and the process and the techniques is about the software itself, because the software like I said earlier in this stream, it's like if you know how to use brushes, if you know how to use opacity and layers, you're pretty much 95% there. The other things, they will make things faster for you if you know how to use them well, but they can also slow you down. It's not like necessary to use all the blend modes and such. That's optional. But even if you know all of that stuff that won't make art any easier it's really about the visual problem solving and that stuff so 
it's one of the reasons why I'm kind of like leaning more into that because honestly it's more important. <laughs> Just talking about blend modes, I can't make endless amount of content out, out of that. And also if I kind of like overemphasize that, it would make it seem like it's somehow important stuff to learn. And I strongly don't think that's the case. I've never had such problems with the pen. I honestly think it might be because the screen is already uh, has been on for so many hours that it's kind of hot. So it might actually gently register like touches in different parts. That's why those swipes are always um, horizontal. I don't think it has anything to do with the pencil itself. Same used to happen in the on my older iPhone. It would get super hot, and then uh, the touch screen would kind of go crazy. And you would only notice it when painting, because otherwise you don't need to make such fine adjustments that you would notice the glitches. Youthful memories influenced your creativity. Traveling. My family didn't live in Finland. We lived all around the world because of my parents. My parents weren't um, that creative, but uh, my father painted when he was younger. I mean, before I was born. Some of my first memories of painting are painting the Super Mario Brothers uh, NES cover image with watercolors with my father. And I still have uh, the game package.
Sorry, but I don't know what to do about that. Maybe I should just like detach it completely. I do have a spare apple pencil somewhere, but I don't think it's going to help in this case. That's really annoying. I just like try to reconnect it with the settings. Dolombiang no guy says, how do you tell when a painting is finished? Uh, what percentage would you say this piece is at now? I guess when you look at your painting, there is this kind of like apex when if you keep painting, you kind of start taking away the attention from the points where you want the viewer to focus. When that ha happens, then the painting is done. And sometimes it's hard to let go. But I always try to think about the bigger picture. And you notice that you're not helping anymore by keep painting, by keeping painting, painting, then stop. <laughs> it will get easier over time to notice that moment.
Because when I've had these classes with students that are in the same room as me and I see them painting, I like physically have to go there and like say that like, now you need to stop, you're done. So a lot of the time it's also a skill to like know when to stop because you might already have like perfect brush strokes, you have the mood and the colors and the attention and the story there in the piece and then just knowing when to stop, I think that's also a skill and it's kind of crazy how often you see people that are painting and they already have a great painting in front of them and then they just keep painting it until it's like completely ruined. I don't know if it's insecurity or something, but... Probably also this like... Um, out of certain look that is kind of popular in digital art that you have to hit that certain type of like concept arty look and it kind of looks the same every time and it takes a lot of time and patience and requires a lot of details no. it can end up looking quite stiff if that's not something that helps the story of that specific piece It's also about posting the art online and that's one of the kind of qualifications like when I feel like I can post this and not immediately hate it. I think that's very um, bad habit to have that you put art online and then you immediately say that oh my god I hate this. Then it's not ready. Don't put it online yet. Keep working on it until it's done. Don't leave it unfinished and not post it.
Hello Mikko. Long time your first time chatter. Have you ever considered painting with a narrative in mind? Have I ever considered not painting with a narrative in mind? I think I've probably done both. <laughs> Mostly always I have a narrative in mind. But it comes uh, with the painting, from the painting. Um, painting your own or someone else's story. I do a lot of book covers. That's usually me trying to paint someone else's story. Uh, it's a really tricky, tricky stop job. Somebody has spent years uh, writing their characters, and there's no way, even with like tons and tons of descriptions and reference materials, that I will ever be able to kind of like match what they already have in their mind. So when taking on client jobs like that, I try to always kind of uh, gauge if they kind of like respect the artist's own freedom too, because that can go really bad quickly. Saturation on the long, long layer. I have just bought an iPad and an Apple Pencil. I totally confused where to start and how should I start digital painting. Lots of love from India. Start simple. I mean, just pick a one brush that you like. Don't think about the layers at first. And then just do a painting that way. Personally, and this is just me, but I wouldn't even fiddle with this opacity. Sure, it sometimes can help, but like I mostly work with like full opacity and just getting rid of all of those extra things. You don't need to know all of the buttons and they're not gonna help with the painting that much. They're gonna help with speed, but not with the painting part. So uh, when you are feel like overwhelmed like that, it's better to just paint with what knowledge you already have and not think that you need to be somehow prepared and you need to master all the tools first before you get something done. Uh, how do you know if something is ugly or if it's a style? <laughs> That's a funny question. Uh, asking for myself. Um, I keep drawing the same ugly, unconventional, stylized face and I'm starting to wonder if that's a style. You get to decide that. If you think it's ugly, I mean... I don't mean that everybody should paint beautiful people. I think we have a problem of everybody painting beautiful people. Uh, but if you think it's a problem, then you are free to change and search new ways of drawing that you like. But if that's something that you like, you can just say that I like doing this, I'm not gonna stop. End of story. No, no further discussion needed. Um, thank you Phoebe, Mikko, thank you all for you have done with your art. Like it's one of these comments that it's really uh, painful for me to read out loud. May you and all those you hold dear enjoy the rest of the year and 2021 be awesome. Thank you.
Thank you, Phoebe, for being in these live streams. I think one of the most fun things about doing this YouTube channel is, I think, these live streams. Because honestly, these make almost zero ad revenue because people don't like to watch live streams that have already been streamed usually at least i see it in the views and they don't really generate any new subscribers either but i just love doing them it's more fun to talk with people that are actually uh, live and watching this maybe painting themselves and i don't know for some reason i really just enjoy that but when I started doing these live streams, it was just like so much anxiety about painting live. I used to be one of those people, even when I was like working, that I hated when people were sitting behind me or watching what I'm doing. <laughs> Especially when I have no idea what I'm doing. But apparently you can get over it. It's just enough exposure to painting live Anna Maria Shuntiaki. I probably butchered that name. I'm sorry. I have a problem of imagining the background and painting the surrounding of my main idea. How do you deal with this? Don't like just. This is going to be like radical and probably like uh, provoking advice for some. But you asked for this. I'm gonna give my honest answer here, and I mean this. This is not a joke. Stop saying the word background. I mean, don't say it in public. Don't say it in the descriptions of your images. Don't talk about backgrounds. Don't say even in your head the word background. Ever again. It's gonna be hard, but you can stop. Stop saying backgrounds. You are making a whole painting. If you go into an art gallery and you look at a painting that has, for example, horse or a portrait of a person they don't have backgrounds those paintings they are full paintings with different elements that all complement the mood and the message of the painting there is not like irrelevant less important area that is just somehow painted in with some trees and a mountain in there don't say backgrounds that's my <laughs> one tip when you think of the painting, think of the whole painting, because every area of the painting is just as important. Like for example, this is the corner of the painting, I don't want people to be looking here, but the contrast is still important, the lack of contrast is still important here. I could destroy this entire painting by having this like high, saturated, high saturation purple paint stroke in here, taking away all of the attention if I don't kind of blend it in with low contrast, low saturation, purple brush strokes. So this corner could destroy the entire painting. It's not irrelevant, even though this is not the main subject of this piece. Okay. I'm sure somebody is like clutching their pearl necklace right now. This is how I feel about it. <laughs> Here it is.
and you have probably, if you have seen any of my previous streams, you probably noticed that I go through the entire painting when I paint it. That kind of prevents me from getting stuck in one area. I, I think this is also how people develop this kind of like favorite areas of the painting, which just don't matter at all. It doesn't matter what your favorite area of the painting is, because if you develop that type of a relationship with one tiny area, then it's going to be really hard to cut that area out when you notice that it doesn't serve the purpose of your story or your main visual impact that you are trying to show to the viewer. from my previous statement. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, do you collaborate with other artists much? Uh, mostly when I'm doing commissions, because uh, most of the commissions I do are for companies, and then I have to work with 3D modelers, writers, directors, and so on. Those are creative people that I collaborate with. I would love to collaborate with uh, my friend Ryan Summer. Um, his Instagram handle is uh, House of Summer. Uh, he's a really good friend of mine that I have met through Instagram. I love his drawings, but the problem is that our styles like, just could not be further apart. So even though I would love to do a collaboration with him, and he's so fast at drawing that it would probably be um, doable for him also, but it's just we haven't been able to figure out like any painting that would kind of it are both of our styles. But maybe we don't need to do a collaboration, but it would just be fun. It would be fun to have something done together. He's now doing this um, Metropolis series, our art deco uh, inspired beautiful illustrations and when he's doing these collections, it's like he's doing a storyboard for an entire like hand-drawn Disney-style movie. And you can see the story in the pieces. It's just amazing to watch. is right. I don't recommend screen protectors. If you use one, fine, go for it. But I think it's a waste of money.
so um, I feel like there's some something I need to explain about this painting because of what has happened is to everybody but I can only speak from my own perspective because of what has happened to me specifically this year I felt like art has been like my one escape and I like everybody else I know has been kind of locked in their homes and you end up living this kind of imaginary life in your head and for me that happens through art and there have been times when especially when the whole quarantine started I felt kind of trapped creatively and otherwise as well but art has been the, the one escape that has kind of helped me through this year and like I said earlier I understand that others will have had worse experiences of this and I know that not having a day job anymore is not the worst thing that can happen when so many have lost their loved ones but this painting is kind of like about this whole year as a one single experience that has mostly happened inside this apartment really and my art has given me a possibility to just explore more spaces and be free And when I did the Art is my real home challenge, it was such a huge turning point for this whole channel that it kind of gave me new hope because I don't know how many of you have been subscribed to this channel last year, but I had like videos that did 500 views and I thought that was like a good video. <laughs> so I made tons and tons of videos that nobody watched and at some point you kind of start to think that like should I even be doing this? This is a lot of work for basically nobody but I guess the whole year has been my lucky break to meet all of you and that has also made me feel less trapped as much as I say that I need to be cautious of like spending too much time replying to comments and direct messages and such because of the addictive qualities and the time commitment that it requires but it also has given me a lot of this sort of feeling of community I met one of my best friends last week and we haven't met the entire year, not even once. It has been really important for me to have people that, especially that I can talk about the art stuff, the specific art stuff that I am interested in, because with most of my friends there is this kind of like a limit that like I have this amount of space and time that I can talk about creativity and the crazy stuff that I have discovered about creativity or myself in the last few months and then you suddenly notice that like okay they have that sort of like I wish I was actually sleeping <laughs> look on their face <laughs> nobody is as excited about that stuff as I am I am endlessly fascinated by creativity And through this channel I have found like-minded like people and that has been a really huge gift. It's just one more way of saying that art is my real home.
I don't get people who replace nibs on their Apple Pencil. I have done hundreds, literally hundreds of paintings, also including all of the commission work that I can't even show on this channel or on my social media feeds. They have all been done with this same pencil and I've never come to even close to needing to replace a nib. Maybe that's like a screen protector thing that I just missed in the chat. Sorry. <laughs> so sharp that it would scratch the screen. I've, I've literally never heard this happening. Maybe it's a thing. Could you possibly be having a death grip of your pencil when you're painting?
think the pencil problem kind of went away when I did that uh, Bluetooth disconnecting. in. Actually, I want to add some kind of like um, black here. that maybe the door could work better if it had more of this um, red hue in it. Just gonna make this quick test. Because the right hue of red that I'm looking for isn't just like a single tone, but it needs to be like a patchwork of different brush strokes and let that color form in the eye optically. It's always the more time consuming way to do it.
red works a bit better. Maybe I should also, I'm just trying to add all the extra elements at this point of like the visual elements so that when I have the painting finished on Instagram that it won't just look like a completely different painting. I'm probably also going to add a, a lamp here, like a normal prison, a cone type of a lamp. Maybe one more beam across this thing. This thing is completely useless now, so I'm gonna get rid of it just to make sure that I don't have extra layers that make everything more confusing. All of these probably could be. have a hard time knowing when to stop these streams but I think I have all the main everything in its place. Probably one element that I could add later is um, like foliage is bigger kind of like gives depth to this whole thing but that's like very boring <laughs> to watch me paint these like blades of grass so I do those on my own time and refine some of the foliage on the right but then the painting will be done and I'm gonna try to do it in a way that kind of preserves some of these uh, brush strokes because I like this texture this here I know that some people think that this is messy especially 
when I have a painting on print. I love, love looking at that stuff. And that's 2020 for me. Um, thanks for everybody for watching this like insanely long stream. Uh, I didn't know that this would be so long. I actually have some dog treats on the table. I should have given them to Vivi. But thank you for watching not only this stream, but um, being part of this channel in general. I don't get a lot of chances to speak to you like this, so thank you. And I'll see you in the next video. I'm looking forward to whatever we're making next year. Uh, one of the plans that I have for next year is I really want to do another like art community, not really a challenge, but like a project where everybody makes art. But it's not going to be a competition because I don't think that is helpful, but something that if you want to do, you can be part of it. I think that's something that I'm looking forward to, but I need to get all of this work stuff first from my hands so I can focus more fully on my channel because that's going to be one of my big priorities in 2021 and I hope you all have a great New Year's and I'll see you later. Bye!